Revising for science exams can be very daunting. Science is a subject with a large quantity of material to learn, so we are providing some help to prepare for your exams. Please use this presentation for ideas on making your revision more effective. The first step to success in a science exam is to know what subject matter you will be tested on. Your first point of contact should be your teacher as they will be able to guide you to revise the correct topics. For the end of year exams this year, you will have three papers, one for each of the sciences. This slide explains the topics that will be tested in the year seven exam papers. This slide contains the topics for the year eight exam papers. Once you know which topics you are being tested on, the next job is to find out the detail of what is covered in those topics. This information can be found in a number of places. 1. Your knowledge organizers. You should have been given these, or at least a keyword list, at the start of each topic. They give a brief overview of the content for that topic. If you have misplaced yours, then they are available on Teams in class materials. 2. Your exercise book. Hopefully throughout the year you have taken clear notes and these will now be extremely useful as you prepare for your exams. 3. BBC Bite Size. This free online resource is split into topics at Key Stage 3 and is a brilliant resource for helping to fill the gaps you may have in your notes. 4. Revision Books. If you already own a science revision guide, then this can be used to help you review the topics to be revised. Don't worry if you don't have one. BBC Bite Size covers the same topics as any revision guide would. Now you have a list of the topics and the content for each topic. You need to decide what needs to be memorized. As previously stated, there is a large quantity of material in science and much of this has to be committed to memory. Unfortunately, there are no shortcuts to this, and as up to 40% of any science exam needs factual recall, it is something every student has to tackle. The following is a list of the main types of information you will need to learn off. Definitions. At the start of every unit of work, you should have been tested on the keywords for that topic. That has hopefully given you a head start on learning the definitions, but please make sure you review these. 2. Equations. This is especially true for your physics exam. You need to know all the equations by heart and to also be able to rearrange them. If you are not sure which equations you need to learn, then please ask your teacher. It is also important to know the units for the quantities used in each equation. 3. Scientific Diagrams For many areas of science, you will need to be able to draw or label a diagram. This could be the apparatus used in experiments, parts of the human body, or graphs and charts. Make sure you know the symbols used to draw the basic lab equipment and when you should use a ruler, and when to draw lines freehand. 4. Chemical formulae. Chemical formulae and symbols are needed mainly for your chemistry exam. Please make sure you are confident in the notation used for common elements and compounds. Also ensure that you understand how to use these to write chemical equations. And the use of the terms reactants and products. 5. Scientific vocabulary. It is important in an exam that you use the correct scientific words in your answers. This is especially true for equipment, parts of the body, and processes that happen. For example, students often call a measuring cylinder a measuring drug. Try not to make mistakes like this. Sometimes words may have different meanings in science from the normal usage. 
For example, the word weight in physics, the word pure in chemistry, and the word respire in biology. These all have different meanings in science as their normal usage. Make sure you understand the specific meaning of these words and others in a scientific context. Once you have made your list of things to learn, then you need to start committing them to memory. It is important to know which methods work best for you. This slide and the embedded video clip contains suggested methods that you could use, but there are others that may also work. 1. Flashcards. Write a definition on one side of the flashcard and the meaning on the other, and then get someone to test you. 2. Mind maps. These are a great way of representing all the main points for a topic in one place and will help you to see how the various sections of the topic link together. Make sure you use colors to make the different areas stand out. 3. Revision posters. These are similar to mind maps and are brilliant for topics with diagrams that need to be learnt. 4. Rhymes and mnemonics. These can be useful when you have lists of information to learn, such as the colors of the light in a spectrum or the reactivity series of metals. There are many that already exist, so try not to spend too much of your time making up new ones. 5. Repetition. When you were younger, you may have learned your spellings by writing them out over and over again. This method of learning is just as useful with equations, chemical formulae, and keywords. 6. Reading. For some students, reading their notes is a good way to revise, but for many of us, the work will more easily be committed to memory if we are actively involved with it. So, while you need to read the work to revise, try not to rely solely on this method. 7. Making notes. Making notes from what you have read is much more effective than just reading. But remember that you are making notes, not copying. So you should aim to reduce what you read to the bare minimum needed to revise from. Eight, test yourself. This is the most important. Try and get someone at home to help you so that you can more easily keep track of what you have learned already and what you still need to learn. Once you have completed your learning, or at the end of learning each topic, you should try to apply what you've learned by answering questions. There are many places that you can get questions to help you, and this slide lists several of them. As a start, you have been assigned some quizzes to complete on Educake. Please make sure that these are completed. On the day of the exam, it is useful to be as calm as possible, or you could end up not making the most of your effort and hard work. When taking exams in school, always turn up to the exam on time and with all the equipment you need. It may be unhelpful to let other students quiz you at the last minute, as this can make you doubt yourself. For these exams that you will sit at home, try to find a quiet place to sit where you will not be distracted. I understand that this may be difficult for some of you. Make sure your phone is in another room so that it does not put you off. During the exam, stay calm, make sure your work is easy to read and that you have shown all your working. Look at how many marks the question is worth as this will give you an idea of the amount of time you should spend on it. If you come across a question that is difficult for you, then move on and come back to it later if you have time. You will gain more marks this way. Sometimes it is useful to skim through the entire paper before you start writing and begin to do the questions you know best first. This helps in two ways. One, you gain confidence early in the exam doing the questions you know best. And two, you complete the questions you are likely to get most marks before risking running out of time. At the end of the exam, if you have any time left, check over your answers. Never sit and do nothing. After the exam, try not to worry. 
there will be nothing you can do about the mark for that paper now. So do not spend ages discussing it with your friends. Instead, start thinking about the next paper you have to sit. Try to keep your revision notes. You will be tested on this work again at some point in the future, and any notes you have made now will save you time later on. Good luck.